Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting for Wednesday, December 6, 2023. Earlier, we met um, in closed session. So I moved to. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, moved. Yeah, motion to resume open meeting. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. In that case, uh, please stand and let's uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in closed discussion to discuss, consider, to consult, non-public tuition, embargoed state data, update our financial with the de financial department and negotiations. All right, thank you. Has everybody had time to review the agenda for tonight? All right, do I have a motion? Move to accept the agenda as presented. Second, okay. motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for November 1st, 2023, closed session. Move to approve the closed minutes from November 1st as presented. Second. Second. All right. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for the November November 1st, 2023 open session. Move to approve the minutes from November 1 open session as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Okay. Uh, at this time uh, in the December meeting every year, we uh, customarily choose a new president and vice president. And uh, this thing this gavel's been sitting here. I've been looking at it for the past year. I've never had a chance to use it. <laughs> so I'm going to bang three times, which is going to signal we're going to vote for president and vice president. Can you pass one down? Sure. And I'm going to pass out ballots. And I'm going to make a motion for uh, Helen Bennett to uh, be the next president of the Board of Education. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Discussion? Anything else? Carrie, what do we do? Just write down our votes. Any further nominations? Any further nominations? All right. We only do this <clears throat> once a year, so got to make sure the procedure is done right. And congratulations to Ms. Bennett, new president of the Board of Education in Queen Anne's County. Thank All you. All right, congratulations. Tough Here. shoes to fall on down. <laughs> you get to look at it for a year. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll continue on with, with the vice president. Mm -hmm. I thought you might hear a nomination or a motion. Yes, I nominate Shannon. Uh, Shannon Bennett. That's your own name. Thank you. Shannon Bennett, Shannon Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Bent. All right, Shannon Bent, not Shannon Bennett. No. And uh, we have a second. Second. All right, any other further nominations? Hearing none, pass our votes to the superintendent. Here you go. And congratulations, our new vice president for Board of Education, Queen Anne's County. Thank you. All right, congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Pass that down to the new president. Okay. Sit back and relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess next on the agenda, Dr. Salins with fun, one of the fun parts. All right. The board will please join me. Test, test, test. Well, good evening, everyone. This is the best part of our meeting when we get to recognize some of our staff members, and we're going to start with the Energizer Bunny Awards. 
Our first award of the night is the Energizer Bunny Award. This award is given to us to staff members or volunteers who keep on going. It is sponsored by Bayview Financial with Mr. Chip Birdingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys, who are unable to be here tonight, but I do want to extend an extra special thank you to them for their partnership. The December Energizer Bunny Award was nominated by Ms. Mrs. Michelle McNeil, who is our Sudlersville Elementary School principal, if she'll please come forward. And as a matter of fact, um, the award was submitted by Mrs. McNeil, but was on behalf of the entire staff at SES. The December Energizer Bunnies are the entire team of SES custodial staff, and that includes Charles Hilton, if he'll please come forward. And Steve Nabb, if you'll please come forward. And Christopher Combs, please come forward. And not able to be here this night tonight is Doran Phillips. So we recognize him as well. Sellersville Elementary School would like to recognize these gentlemen this evening for the Energizer Bunny Award. These gentlemen work tirelessly over the summer to clean and prepare SES for the upcoming school year. When teachers returned, the custodial staff were always checking in with the teachers to see what they needed to be done, adjusting desks, um, taking trips to the warehouse and helping them move furniture. The SES custodial staff takes pride in our school and is very much a part of our team. They are always going above and beyond to make sure our school is safe, clean, and welcoming. It's not often that we get to celebrate the people behind the scenes and we want to make sure that everyone knows that SES has a hardworking and dedicated custodial team. So thank you gentlemen and congratulations. Energizer Bunny for you to keep in your office there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys all come around here, gentlemen, please, so we can get a nice picture. Yes, Miss Bunny? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody can look at me. Here we go. I'm going to take several. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Our next award, the Queen Anne's County Public School Spirit Award. This award is given to an individual or individuals who embody the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Also nominated by Mrs. Michelle McNeil, the um, principal there at Sellersville Elementary School. And December's Spirit Award winner is Kelly Embert. If she'll please come forward. And she's not here. Oh, darn. Well, I'd like to read a little bit about her. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit Award goes to Kelly. Kelly is someone who has dedicated her career to Sellersville Elementary School. She is caring and empathetic to the students at SES, and she is always wanting to make a difference in the lives of students. Kelly is a team player and is passionate about trying new initiatives to help her students succeed. She has a positive attitude that helps her students persevere each and every day. Each morning, you can find Kelly standing at her door greeting students from her previous classes as well as her current class. During the day, Kelly is always motivating her students and providing them with the tools that they need to be successful. SES is lucky to have such a dedicated staff member who is compassionate about her students, the community, and the SES vision. Thank you for nominating her. And our last words, the Shining Star Awards, and we have a couple of them this evening. The first Shining Star Awards have also been nominated by Ms. McNeil, <laughs> the principal of Sutler's Bell Elementary School. The first Shining Star for the month of December is actually a co-teaching team. So if Christine Joyner and Jennifer Ports could please come forward. And Ms. McNeil has to say about this lovely team, the Shining Star Awards go to Christine and Jennifer. They have been co-teaching together for over five years at Sellersville Elementary School. This dynamic duo provides engaging lessons to support and challenge students every day. And since it is rare for them to have planning time at the same time due to their other commitments, Christine and Jen 
will arrive early or stay late to plan lessons, prepare resources for their students. The dedication and enthusiasm Jen and Christine exhibit allows the students in their class to shine each and every day that makes um, the candidates the best shining stars to receive this award. And our second shining star for the month of December has also has been nominated this time by Mrs. Jolene Smith, who is the supervisor of special education. If she would please come forward at this time. The final shining star award for the month of December is presented to Mr. Nick Davis, special education teacher at Graysonville Elementary School. If you'll please come forward. <laughs> Mrs. Smith says that Mr. Davis is uh, um, charged with providing instruction to students across five grade levels in our program for emotional and academic learning support classroom. He works tirelessly to differentiate his instruction to offer lessons that are meaningful, relevant, and engaging. Students in Mr. Davis's class are not always our most eager students to learn through tradi traditional methods. However, the relationships he cultivates with his students creates not only eager students, but also successful learners. Mr. Davis is always willing to take extra steps to improve his professional practice by furthering his own knowledge. He is invested in the betterment of Graysonville Elementary community and the lives of his students, not just those with the pleasure of being in his class. He truly embodies the belief that all students have a right and ability to learn, which shines through in his dedication. Mr. Davis is a shining star for the staff and students alike. Congratulations. Family up. Yeah. We need everybody up here. Come on, guys. Come on. 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 Thank you. All right. <coughs> so nice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's very nice. Okay, next, uh, board involvement. Who would like to start? I will. I had the opportunity to attend the Veterans Day ceremony at Sellersville Middle School, put on by the eighth graders, and wow, it was amazing. They truly did a, a great job. It was very moving, and um, kudos to all of them. Nice. I attended uh, Sellers Grandparents Day. Very uh, fun thing to do and see all those kids and <laughs> some people I know too, grandparents. But I want to thank everybody in the school system to have a Merry Christmas because we're in our holiday season and we appreciate everything we do with our staff, our students, and uh, just wish you all a Merry Christmas. Um, let's see, I attended the first MABE Legislative Committee meeting um, at the beginning of the month. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to be able to get firsthand with the MABE lawyer all of the information that the state is doing and how it reflects on us and how I can provide information and share with this board on what's going on. 
Okay. I also attended a uh, Veterans Day celebration and it was it was so fun. And I was so impressed with the principal. She was able to just, they had flags. Now, you know, young ones with the flags just want to wave all the time, but she had them, okay, stop your flag waving. And they stop and they <laughs> wave and they stop and she was good. Um, but I also wanted to give a shout out to Adeline Gray, who was the winner of the superintendent's um, greeting card contest. I understand there were over 40 entrants and that they were all very good. Um, but a shout out to Miss Miss Gray and also to Med Peak Elementary and Graysonville Elementary for their Maryland accreditation. That's quite a team effort for everybody. That's right. So that's it. Yeah. Recognizing that. Okay. Our Perfect. student members. So, um, this, who would like to go? Miss Forte, you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. Um, so for the month of December, um, on December 7th, tomorrow, we have our first Powder Puff volleyball game. And it's kind of like the powder puff football game, but this time the boys will be playing volleyball and the girls will be coaching. <laughs> At um, 5 p.m. we have our freshmen versus the juniors and 5.30 we have sophomores versus seniors. And then at 6 p.m. we have our championship game and it is $5 to get in. Um, on December 7th and 8th, um, the Beauty and the Beast or Beauty and the Beast will be having audition workshops for the, <laughs> sorry, I said that wrong, but for the spring play, and then um, on December 8th, I'm starting a new club at my school. It's called Debate Club. And oh, nice. the first day will be on Friday, and I'm very excited for that. On December 11th and 12th um, will be the Beauty and the Beast Spring Play Auditions. December 15th, we are having our first ever annual Blizzard Ball. On December 20th, the Queen Anne's County High School Choir will travel to CMS and SMS for their Christmas Curl presentation tour. On December 22nd, we have an early dismissal. And from December 25th through January 1st is our winter holiday break. And we have a lot of sporting events this week. Um, today, the indoor track team will, was at Snow Hill. Um, yesterday, all of our basketball teams played. And today, all of our boys basketball teams played starting at three o'clock at home. Um, our boys wrestling team was at North Carolina, 5 p.m. And tomorrow we have our swim team. We have our first swim meet um, at the YMC in Centerville, I think against Kent County at 4 p.m. And on Saturday, um, we have our girls dual wrestling meet at Manchester Valley at 9 a.m. And our freshman boys basketball team, be, basketball team will be playing at 2 p.m. at Teaser Rodney. Nice. Yeah, so that's a lot. Oh. The powder puff volleyball sounds um, like you don't want to miss it. All right. And the firm? Uh, for Ken Allen, uh, last night we started the winter sports regular season. Uh, last week, we held an amazing joint choir and band concert at the historic church last Saturday. Uh, we also have a band concert on the 14th and a choir concert the 19th. Next Wednesday, the 13th, we have a class of 2024 move, holiday movie night and cookie decorating, which is at the edge. You can give a donation and all the money is collected and will go directly to the Salvation Army Angel Tree Program. Great. Thank you. All right. Dr. Salins. Yeah, so I did get a lot of school visits in um, in the month of November and even here early December. But I have to say that I went to Arsenic and Lace, the play at Queen Anne's County High School, and kudos to mm -hmm. those students um, behind the scenes and on the scene because it was a fantastic play. Probably, I have to say, in my career, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to, the, to those students who worked really hard to make that happen. Dr. Sprankle. Good evening, President Bennett. I also need to say Vice President Bent, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team members, uh, for the record, I am Dr. Marcia Sprinkle, Assistant Superintendent, and it gives me a pleasure to share with you this evening our November Spotlight. So I am so excited to share this because we had lots going on in November. And so just sit back and relax. First up, we have Centerville Elementary School. During October, the school hosted a Halloween parade Students were encouraged to dress up like their favorite characters, which was an exciting time at Centerville Elementary Schools. Winners of the painted character pumpkin contest are shown there on the picture there. Over 100 students participated in the contest, which was coordinated by the media specialists. 
Congratulations to Mrs. Kearns, the physical education teacher, for winning the SHAPE Maryland Award. We're so excited about it. The award was presented to Mrs. Kearns at the SHAPE Maryland Conference in Glen Burnie back in October. So congratulations, Ms. Kearns. We're so proud of you. You represent Queen Anne's County Public Schools well. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Churchill Elementary School. As you can see, Churchill Elementary School staff, students, and families utilize the outdoor classroom. You can see they're out there working and they're really enjoying those outdoor classrooms. And we'd like to thank, uh, thank actually Michael Page for his leadership in ensuring that our outdoor classrooms are well functioning, they're safe, there are guidelines for safety out there. So have fun students with those outdoor classrooms. Next up, we have Kent Island Elementary School. Ms. Cornish welcomed the grandparents and special friends to the morning visitation to Kent Island Elementary School. The Kent Island Volunteer Fire Department was the main attraction at the fire prevention assembly. The PTA sponsored a fall costume parade. You can see the students that are marching there in the parade. There were many amazing costumes at the 2023 Ken Island Elementary School Fall Costume Parade. Next up, Mattapique Elementary. Mattapique Elementary School students continue to work hard and share strategies for solving math problem, problems. I know that Ms. Smith is sitting behind me and I know she's extremely proud of Mattapique Elementary School students. The students and staff enjoy seeing the new pre-K playground flooring being put in and installed. It is completely finished and so they are really, really enjoying that new playground. There was a huge turnout for the Halloween parade also at Mattapique Elementary School. Next, we have Centerville Middle School. Centerville Middle School held its first fall community event. And boy, was it an event. It was a hit with hundreds of people coming out to enjoy the live music, food, trucks, games, and learned all about the benefits available from community organizations in attendance. The evening was topped off by the first annual Bumpkin Pumpkin Students vs. Staff Volleyball Game. Lots of fun. You can see Mrs. Kenna, who is the new principal there at Centerville Middle School, pictured with Mr. Heyman. Go Centerville Middle School. Next up, we have Mattapique Middle School. Mattapique Middle School Scholastic Book Fair was held last month. The first one in over eight years. Wow. Students enjoyed picking out new books to add to their reading collection. Representatives from Queen Anne's County Health Department stopped by during Red Women Week. Custom, Costumes Day was held last month with great participation and the Unified Arts team winning first place. Mattapique Middle School. Next up, we have Sutlersville Middle School. Sutlersville Middle School hosted their annual Hispanic, Hispanic, excuse me, Heritage Celebration on Friday, October 13th. It was emceed by our own, very own Miss Anna Padilla, who is one of our migrant recruiters. She had a great, great time there um, celebrating Hispanic Heritage, um, Hispanic, excuse me, Heritage Month. So congratulations to our Sutlersville Middle School students, staffs, and family. On Saturday, October 28th, the, the Sutlersville Middle School Band marched in the annual Chestertown Halloween Parade. On Friday, October 27th, Sutlersville Middle School hosted the annual SEA truck, Trunk or Treat, which was attended, well attended by many of the families in Sutlersville. So we were so excited about that. They celebrated Halloween in a safe space. Way to go, Sutlersville. We'd like to thank all of our partners for sponsoring the events that took place at Settlersville Middle School. Next up, we have Ken Island High School. Ken Island High School held its math night last month. Math Honor Society officers served as greeters. Ken Island 
High School also celebrated National Education Week and National Apprenticeship Week. It was well attended. We had lots and lots of support from the community. So great job there, Kent Island High School. Last but surely not least is Queen Anne's County High School. The National Honor Society held their induction ceremony in October. 35 students were inducted. Many staff members got their spirit for Halloween. The winner of the costume contest was the car wash portrayed by the counseling office. Other entries included the special education department dressing as condiments and the math department portrayed the 2023 Barbie catalog. And that concludes our spotlight <laughs> for last month. That's great. Thank you, Dr. Sprinkle. <laughs> All right. Do we have anyone signed up for public comment? We do. All right. We ask that all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individuals, staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. First on the list, Mr. Richard McNeil. Good evening, and, uh, new president, welcome, and vice president, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm Richard McNeil. I represent myself in the uh, retirement uh, school personnel for Queen Anne's County, and uh, I'm here tonight to just share a few things. Uh, first off, I would like to extend our holiday uh, greetings to everybody. I know this is a tremendous busy time of the year, having remembered that from uh, being in a principal's position at a time with uh, all the band concerts, the choral concerts and everything. So it's a good time. Uh, I'd like to give a couple shout outs. Uh, Brian Tyler, uh, who just got a thousand dollars to do a mural and looking forward to see what that's going to be like. And uh, I know Brian, he's very enthusiastic and just loves his children. Also, I'd like to just say thanks to all the coaches, uh, the fall coaches. We had a, for both high schools, a very good season and it doesn't just happen and i know how hard they work and and our athletes also but uh, just for the coaches and again um the talent that's in this county that comes out with all the fall plays uh, uh, it just it just never ceases to amaze me how we can get uh, 40 children young adults at both high schools up on a stage to perform and uh, and just quality productions in, in both schools. I enjoy them. And I, I tell friends in the community, it's the cheapest entertainment that you can have uh, around. So and, and I'd just like to do that. Um, I know that uh, as you're working on your budget, uh, we as retirees appreciate the money that is put aside to, for our health care package. And uh, we do appreciate that as you're going forward. Uh, keep us in mind on that. Um, our group will be meeting uh, next Tuesday uh, for our December celebration, and we're looking forward to that. We've already got close to 50 members coming out, uh, which for us is, is a, just a nice number, an exciting time. Um, our project this time is to provide gloves and or socks for pre-K and kindergarten students. So we're, our goal is over 102 this year. So we're, we're looking forward to that in that aspect. Um, Thank you very much. Have a great uh, Christmas holiday break. Uh, I know the people in schools need those 10 days just to chill out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other? All right. All right. That was quick. All right, let's move on to um, 
Mr. Doc, excuse me, Dr. Kibler for the expenditure status reports. Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, Dr. Matthew Kibler, uh, Director of Accountability and Implementation and Interim CFO. And I'm here tonight uh, with the expenditure status report and summary for any questions that you may have. Don't see any 100, so we're doing all right right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have no easy, questions. Easy. No, any I'll, questions? I'll, I'll take it. No? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, that was easy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kibler. All right, Ms. Hickey for Policy 240 Child Nutrition Programs. First read. Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. For the record, I'm Julie Hickey, Coordinator of Food Services. I bring before you tonight the first read of Policy 2. 140 child nutrition programs before it's posted to the district's website for public um, comment period. Um, currently, we participate in two child nutrition programs, both the National School Lunch Program and the School Breakfast Program. Both of these programs are federally funded and they're also administered both at the federal and the state levels. Um, these two programs operate under two different set of regulations, monitoring standards and state uh, reporting requirements. In order for us to claim these meals, get reimbursement, we do have to adhere with all of these regulations. Um, this is not a new policy, it's just a revision to an old policy um, that includes all of the current uh, regulations, both state and federal, um, that were changed with the Healthy, Hungry, Healthy Hunger Free Child Kids Act of 2010. Are there any questions on the policy or any questions on the revision to the policy? I just had one question. Did I read somewhere in here that the program is administered between 10 a.m. and 10 and 2 p.m.? For the right? school lunch program. The lunch program. Yes. And then what, is there hours for breakfast? There are not right? hours for breakfast that are required. It's required to be done within um, when the kids arrive to school. But yeah, the lunch program has to be between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you for Thank your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Groh and Dr. Kibler for second read on policy 205. Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team, Jonathan Groh, the supervisor of accountability. I uh, bring to you tonight the second read for two uh, policies. The first one being policy 205, acceptable use of technology and electronics. Um, during the first read, we went over um, the edits of um, a few updated links and um, the addition of social media and the updated personal electronic device policy, taking out the cell phone policy and replacing it. Um, since the first read, there have been no comments on this so far. Ms. Ms. Bennett, if I can add, we had talked about, you had brought up in past meetings about not getting a lot of comments on the policies when they're out for read. So we did start bringing policies now to the School System Improvement Committee and the Citizens Advisory Council as well, just for review, either at those meetings or in between meetings. So as they're presented the first time. so. Uh, the one that was just started in the next two have been circulated to those two groups. Okay. Well, there wasn't much change on this other than to update that we've moved right. on. <laughs> yeah. Right. The landlines. All right. Any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. And then the next one of the second one is policy 705 was the state of, uh, student data governance and privacy. Also the second reading, okay. uh, which uh, was actually an addition um, of the voluntary product accessibility template, the VPATS, which uh, basically just explained how we're going to make all of our products accessible um, for all of our students and staff. Um, and then that was also added to the back um, with all of the um, acts and laws, um, as well as um, the reviews that we'll do annually as, as we can continue to use technologies. 
And again, there were no comments. No comments. And that was also brought up to the same groups. Um, so this um, was the second. And then um, I will come back next month. <laughs> Any other comments, Any questions? questions? All right, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, we have, I'm sorry, Mr. Bearclaw ah, for second read on policy 215. All right. Good evening, President Bennett, Vice President Bent, <coughs> board members, Dr. Salins, executive team. My name is Daryl Bearclaw. I'm the school facility planner. Uh, before you this evening is the second read for policy 215. Minority Business Enterprise or MBE procedures for state funded public school construction projects. Uh, over the first read, we went over the, um, the details of the policy. Basically is, uh, the long and short of it is, is that these uh, policy requirements are required to be implemented for any school project in order to receive uh, school, uh, I'm sorry, any state funded school project in order to receive state funds. So over the first 30 days, um, uh, Ms. Dennis did not, we did not receive any comment, no public comment. Any questions or comments? All right. Thank you very much. Sure, very good. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Easier, Mark. Hey, Dr. Sprinkle. Easier, huh? Our PFY update. Why get some stuff? Good evening again, President Bennett, Vice President Bent, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team members. I am Dr. Marcia Sprinkle, and I'd just like to update you on the PFY situation. I know that it's been of great concern, but um, you'll be pleased to know that uh, there are two, I want to just start by saying there are the PFY menu schools and there are the PFY non-menu schools. The PFY non-menu schools would represent our 21st century community learning centers, which is a separate grant for our three elementary schools, which happen to be Graysonville Elementary School, Churchill Elementary School, and Settlersville Elementary School. I will tell you that the registration forms have already gone home for those three schools. So they're set to go and ready to start on January the 2nd. The other side to our PFY happens to be our menu schools, which would represent our four middle schools, Bayside Elementary School, Kennard Elementary School, and Mattapique Elementary School. With that side of the PFY arm, I just need to talk about the fact that um, we are making progress. We almost are totally fully staffed. Uh, we just have a couple more staff adjustments to make. But I will say to you that I've had to actually converse with Dr. Salins because the funding is an issue. It really is an issue. So Dr. Salins said that she would take a look at our operating budget to see if we can supplement to help fix our shortfall, because we, while we do have money that we've received from um, our local management board, which we're grateful for that, it just doesn't cover the full cost of everything. So we are, I would say, we're about 75% there. I want to thank everybody in Queen Anne's County as far as the staff is concerned, starting with central office staff as rather, and also our school-based staff. It truly does take a village to make this work. It is not an easy task. It's a heavy lift. I will tell you that. Um, we were fortunate enough to have, I will say Julie Hickey may have left by now, but we were able to get all of our snacks for both programs free. So I'm excited about that. The transportation is coming out of another grant the Maryland Lees grant, so we're excited about that, but we still have those salaries and also the supplies that need to be purchased. And we wanna make sure that our programs are robust, robust and that actually we have our theaters, sports, and, and that we have all facets represented. 
So we want to make sure that it's equitable and that every student who wants to participate has an opportunity to participate. So the hope is by Monday, we will send home those letters. Once I have the staff in place and Dr. Salins has had a chance to look at our operating budget along with Dr. Kibler to ensure that we have money to offset our PFY menu schools. I can send those letters home, hopefully with staff next week by Monday at the very latest to recruit our students. I will say um, we've had our schedules are being set up or already set up. We pretty much tentatively have our schedule set up for the sports. We just got to make sure that our staff is in place and that we have enough funding to cover the costs. Um, we're slighted for January, the week of January 2nd, and we will move all the way until May the 24th for our menu PFY schools. So it truly has taken a team effort to make this happen. It's not just a one person deal, it takes everybody. So I just wanted to let you know, um, it was a small window of time for us to prepare, but we are doing it and we're going to make it happen for our students because we know that after school programs are truly important to our students and our families and our students look forward to it. So that is my update regarding PFY. Are there any questions? Well, I just want to say I appreciate it <clears throat> because the, a group put us in a bad position this year, I feel. When we, um, I got contacted by some parents and I know another group stepped up and said they would take care of this program over the summer. They could not, they could not handle it. I think there's a lack of communication. I talked to both their director and their board of directors and I'm very disheartened that what, what they did that did not, I mean, they put us, you know, we're responsible, we're the, we're the school system. We're gonna provide for our students. And I appreciate any groups that help us out, but it's gotta be open communication and don't bite off more than you can chew. And then at the last minute, tell us you can't do it. I think that was a very, I found it very disheartening when I found out about that um, because a lot of these kids want this. Yes. And I commend Dr. Salins and her staff for putting this together and getting this through. Um, and I'm not condoning anybody, but I think people better really look into things. And I don't think they understand what happens to run some of these programs that we have to run in, a, in an equitable, fair way for open for everybody. Yes. And some of the things I was hearing, I mean, <laughs> luckily it got stopped. I know that you guys have looked at everything. Is there an opportunity for us to put the non, the menu schools on the non-menu granted no. budget? Because if you notice, the three schools are our Title One schools. Right. Those funds come just. That's our four hundred thousand dollar budget. Yeah, that that's the that's the level of poverty in the school dictates that the grant um, applies to them, and that is a challenge. Um, that, you know, I, I've seen other districts where they only run programming in the schools where the schools qualify because it isn't part of my budget. I don't have a line item at all. You know, the local management board is wonderful to give us a chunk of money to do it, but it's not nearly enough not money. To it. to It won't even cover our transportation. Well, I think so, I mean, next year is going to be a huge challenge because the LEADS grant will be gone, so we won't have any transportation money. And I mean, we might end up not being able to run program in all buildings, but but the 21st century. I mean, I think we need to understand that as as a as a community that it's not in our budget. Um, and, and, and right now going into the next several years of having some pretty significant impacts to the budget because of Blueprint, it's gonna be more and more challenging for us to carve out any money to do those types of programs. Doesn't, I mean, our four schools get, four, three schools, the Title I schools get three $400,000. The elementary Title I schools. Yes. And then we have a local management board has a hundred thousand dollars, roughly. It's like a hundred and thirty um, to run, our, to run, all, run all the programs. Yeah, so that just shows you the magnitude, the challenges we have. Right. Yeah, 20, you know. like like out of that, some is um, just for materials of instruction, right. but you know, and, and staffing this is very difficult too because um, you know during COVID we signed MOUs to use grant funds to pay for summer school um, opportunities um, that were at a higher rate than what was in our contract. So those were short term just for that given year. Of course, we ended up doing it two years in a row because we had grant monies. Well, we can't break the contract and pay them more than what's in the contract. So many of them 
rightfully so say I, I can't afford daycare to stay after school you know what i mean my daycare is as much so if i stay after school then the money that i'm making is actually going to pay for my daycare so i i understand that completely but at the same time we have a contract and we can't arbitrarily um select to break the contract right yeah Do we have any business partners that maybe we could reach out to for we, we actually are working with several different business partners from um, boys and girls club um the edge um, YMCA. YMCA. So we have those partnerships, but um, they're they're great, but we don't have the money to pay staff. That's bottom line. Exactly. Transportation and staff is the the biggest um, challenges that we have. So it's what, very concerning. What has happened between if it's been running for twenty seven years between last year and all the previous years? What changed with this year? Why they're so like funding and staff? Like what is caused that to happen? Well, with. Um, the other organization that actually um, oversaw PFY in previous years, they could set their wages, okay? And so they could increase it and make it higher, so to speak. And so they were able to do that. We don't have that luxury. We don't, you know. And they also um, have been out actually soliciting donors to donate towards PFY as well. So those are the differences. All right. I guess I was wondering if it, what happened to the group that was doing it um, before? So not, when I came, this last one, when right? I came on board, the person who was running the entire program, and the second kind of person in command that was um, writing lessons and getting materials together and everything, they both left. The, um, they met with me the first week I was here to say, here is the, you know, the paperwork and um, good luck with it. I mean. Honestly, mm -hmm. you know, rightfully they were, really, I guess, retiring or whatever you want to call that. So, um, of course, then that was COVID, which was extremely hard to get programming up and running. And then the second year, we really thought we were going to get programming up and running, and that was very challenging. So, since I have been here, we have not been successful in getting full programming up and running across the board. We've had more of, of spots of success with it, but we have not had complete full um, programming running since I've been here. So. It's been very challenging. So can we, the lady that was in there before, Ms. Umberger, mm -hmm. was she paid by us or was she paid by a grant, like her salary? So through the local management board, um, those monies came to her and she um, was able, like um, Dr. Sprinkle said, to hire her own staff to work um, for after school programming. And, I, and I'll be honest, I don't know that I know the full extent of where that programming was. I don't have the full history of whether it was at every single one of those. See, I don't think Bayside Elementary School, they haven't recently had a program, have they, in many That's years. True, have so I don't think that programming had, was running in every building. So that also probably would have had a positive impact on the budget. So can we get like one person again that was the director that takes on the whole responsibility instead of, you know, you guys having to juggle everything at the last second of? Well, if, we, if we had the funding to do that, yes, absolutely. And that yep. comes, you said, from the local management. The local, local management, management board is, okay. but that's not enough funding to, that wouldn't be enough funding to even pay for the per, the one person's salary to do it. So it is really a lack of funding. Yeah. Well, thanks for your efforts. I know this was a quick turnaround. Yeah, and it was. It's great that we yeah. can start after the First of Christmas year. break. Yeah. And we do appreciate everybody's patience. And we know that after school programming is good for kids. Nobody's going to say that in 21st century. Grants have been around for as long as I can remember and always have had a very positive impact on students. Um, so we know that we're going to be able to continue those positive things. It's just trying to stand up all the other ones with lack of money. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. for the update. All right, thank you. Anyone else have other questions? Nope, she's getting up already. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> all right. The HR report. Um, which was presented in a closed session. So can I get a motion to? Motion to approve the HR report. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Mrs. Smith, we, she already was here earlier and we discussed the non-public tuition. So can I get um, a motion for the tuition? I can get it. I know that was interesting. I, I can read the motion yeah. out loud, so um, we can go. Sure. Okay. Um, um, the motion would be to approve the Board of Child Care the Strawbridge School tuition. The fiscal impact is $123,156.10. 
budget source FY24 unrestricted operating budget. Okay. So moved. That's what I was looking for. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Mrs. Smith. Financial algebra. It even sounds fun. Just lots of fun. That's good. Good stuff. Uh huh. Good evening, Ms. Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. For the record, I'm Amy Smith, supervisor of K-12 mathematics and gifted and talented. And today it's the math hat that I'm wearing before you. I am bringing you a course proposal. This is a high school course we would like to offer next year um, for, for students to choose as a selection. This kind of meets several components that we need to to offer to students. Students for many years and parents have been asking for something that directly relates to some financial literacy components, helping support students in um, the ideas behind taxes, uh, finances, income, loans, all of those kinds of components. And we are in desperate need of alternate math classes so that students can complete a four year math program um, in, in all areas of the CCR ap approvals, um, accreditations for students. So this course can offer follow up for students who may be taking a, um, a math course sequence and they aren't necessarily going directly into a STEM program or um, not looking towards the four year program because they have a career route that they're looking for and this would help in that. It would also offer a fourth math credit for students instead of taking alternate classes that they may really struggle in because they don't see some connections. The course is being designed with really application based components of algebra concepts using the applications of the financial literacy. It does have many of the Algebra 1 standards that are built within it so that it also meets our MSDE requirements for alternate coursework if a student may not meet their CCR endorsement through their MCAP testing in Algebra 1. So for a student who might be in that situation, they would have Algebra 1, they pass the course, but they may not have gotten a 3 or 4 on the MCAP, they take geometry, they've passed geometry, and we still need to meet some, some guidelines to help them get to CCR endorsement through coursework and a potential of taking another um, CCR assessment. So I'm asking for approval to be able to offer this next year. And you have before you kind of the outline of the different financial literacy components that are all built into that financial algebra course. Yeah, this sounds great. I and, and not even just as an alternative for people who are maybe not pursuing other avenues, but just on its own, it's just a fantastic. So yeah. once you guys vote, and I will I will share with you some perspectives that I want to bring to the board. I was going to ask that same question because yeah. okay, yeah. So give it. That, I need to be share that until first. I get my class. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, President Bennett, I request that the board approve the new financial algebra daily living and planning course for the 2025 24-25 high school program study. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So President Bennett, before we move on, um, I think that the board is well aware that during the strategic um, plan, as we were gathering data from students, staff, community, everyone, that financial literacy was uh, really concerning, mm -hmm. um, that people would really like us to have a class that is um, a required class for students to take. Um, we do have a financial literacy class, but that class is a social studies class and really does not align to the application piece of which Ms. Smith just um, talked about, talking about interest when you get a loan. What about student loans or any loan for a house? How do you go about buying a house? How do you do taxes? and all those application pieces. So when Amy came to me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing ever because I really feel like it's a far better match for financial literacy for our students. So I um, would like to say that we are gonna go out and survey and um, and I will present those results to you. And, and, and if they are as favorable as I hope they are to be, I would be making a recommendation that this would become a requirement for every student. Um, 
So for our, sometimes for our students who may not be on a track of those upper level math courses, just like Ms. Smith said, this would be an opportunity for them to grab another math credit where financial literacy isn't a math credit. And if I'm a high flyer, this doesn't hurt me either because I have uh, four electives in my schedule, so I can take it as an elective, and that will not deter me from taking, um, you know, a, a very upper level math sure. course. As a matter of fact, um, a student who may be in an advanced math track can certainly take this and a math, you know, advanced math class and this class in the same exact semester, not not even at, at opposing semesters. Um, so while the math might not be this highest level of math there, the application process is, is just, you know, um, I think brings more value to our students. And so, I mean, that will be my recommendation. I hope that when we survey and, and that the data comes through, we certainly will be bringing it through the, the SSIC and the CAC to get their feedback as well. Um, but kind of more to come, I, I feel like with that. So, and the, the desire and design behind the course is that it is very much a project-based type of component. So while they're learning the algebraic concepts and reinforcing the algebraic concepts, they're also physically looking at ads for housing and then going the route for their choice and can, making those comparisons and coming up with a best choice analysis for earnings that they may have and in, in their progression. And the, and, and the um, compounding factors of your right. interest rates and what that looks like and how, you know, inflation impacts those types of things. And so it's just, a, you know, everything about it really is a far better match um, than our financial literacy course that we offer right now, which is very narrow focused and really doesn't have. Yeah, it's focused concept. mainly on investment and stock market, stock market applications. So students get to play the stock market game, use their monopoly money in different investments, and at the end of the semester determine who has invested well and earned the most in those different categories. Which is a great it. skill to have. It is but absolutely. It, but, but these it's skills, not the I think, every day are, that are much in. Um, more applicable to Point. somebody in their regular everyday life. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Kibler, budget calendar. Favorite time of year. <laughs> It's a busy. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening again. I bring before you tonight, uh, just following along with the past few years, um, proposed budget development calendar for next fiscal year, 24, 25. It, it really does follow the same model we've used um, the past two years. And, and I do think that, you know, there are a lot of meetings and we might not need to have all of those to be honest with you. I know last year we canceled a couple of them because we didn't right. didn't need to meet. Um, so we certainly won't meet if we don't need to. I will promise you that, but I'd like to at least have them on the books. Um, it's easier to take it off than to put it on. So what we'll have basically in January, a regular board meeting plus two other meetings and in February, a regular meeting plus two other meetings. Correct. And and, and, and as I said, whether we need both of those each month, right. I, I don't know, but, but I'd rather have them scheduled yeah. and, and then right. um, cancel them. Right. Nope. Sure. Yeah. Okay. This does kick off a little bit officially, formally with the budget roundtable on December 18th. We've sent out a save the date pending approval of this calendar tonight. We'll send formal uh, invites uh, to you all and mm -hmm. commissioners as well to hear that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has that it? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Did you get, did anybody make comments? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, uh, propose that the board approve the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thanks, Matt. Thank, Thank you. Sir. you. <clears throat> all right, Mr. Pender. Good evening, President Bennett, Vice President Bent, uh, Dr. Salem, board members, executive team, for the record. My name is uh, Sid Pender, Chief Operation Officer, Operating Officer, excuse me. Uh, I'm uh, here before you tonight to seek approval for um, Raymond Aaron Jr. of the Queen Anne Bus Line uh, LLC to purchase a new used bus for the 2024-25 school year. Um, as you know, 
you can operate a bus up to 15 years in the state of Maryland. Um, Mr. Uh, Aaron's bus will be up at that time. Uh, right now, I believe it's about a 14 month turnaround time if you're purchasing a new bus in that time frame, maybe a little bit it's longer, longer than that. Than it was the beginning of the year. Um, I know we had some ones that had just ordered buses last year and they're just arriving just recently. Um, this would be for a either a new or used bus with a PVA associated with that uh, year. Okay. Question I have is PVA runs, what's that? That's a 10 year, 15 year? 15. It's the life of the bus. 15 years. Yep. Our contract runs, we have a multi-year contract right now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, is there ways if the bus driver does not want to continue operating a bus, he could opt out? I mean, then he'd opt out of his PVA, I'm assuming? As it would operate under the contract, whatever okay. contract. So three years contract, it would operate under that contract for the PVA. And then if the, the, the contract wasn't suitable to some of the bus drivers, and they, they could just get out. Yes, it, but I would. I mean, we're, we're committing to 15 years for a PVA, but we don't commit 15 years to our contract. That's correct. But I would say at, at this point, if somebody else were to pick up that bus run, mm -hmm. then, you know, that bus would be associated with that PVA. Okay, then it goes to that and yep. follows that. Because, I mean, I just, you know, I've, I hear this stuff that, you know, this is one of our major costs of our budget, transportation. And, you know, we have to move bus runs around and sh not sh some long or some shorter. It is, things change. And if somebody's not happy with it, I don't want somebody to be unhappy working for us. And if they don't want to do it, then don't do it. But, you know... We, we've got to operate in the most, you know, the most efficient way too, as long as we're under our contract. Because I think, don't they get a minimum anyway? There's a minimum run for- so Everybody's guaranteed account. so much money to, anyway. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. President Bennett, I move that the board approve the Raymond C. Aaron Jr. to purchase a new used bus for the 2024-2025 school year to replace bus number 1010. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Thank you. All right. Public comment. Do you have any no. signed up? Okay. Future meetings and events. So we currently have it for the 3rd of January, 2024, 6 p.m. Well, Merry Christmas to everyone, since we won't be meeting before then. Can I get a motion to adjourn? And a happy new year? Yes, and a happy, mm -hmm. yes, right. and a happy new year as well. In that Thank case, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.